Hello, this is Captain. Welcome back to Stormworks Basics Tutorial. This is going to be the beginning of a series where we talk about uh, the Steam parts and how they're working with the new pressure updates. So, be a group of tutorials, and hopefully, this will help you guys get your Steam systems up and running. All right, so the first thing you need to understand is that the furnaces will make heat that can be passed to coolant that can uh, warm your boiler but the furnaces will also make ambient heat they will heat up the room you're in and so let's go ahead and we'll grab a diesel furnace here and so we need to understand about this diesel furnace is this is not only going to heat the coolant this is also going to heat uh, the room and so the problem with this is for example if you have your diesel furnace uncapped and it is just as hot as possible what you're going to get is you're going to get condenser problems and so this is your steam condenser and what a steam condenser does is the whole the whole premise behind steam power is that when water is heated above the boiling point it expands rapidly and because it expands we can take that expansive force and we can harness it to do things like move a piston or in this case in this first video would we'll be uh, running a turbine and so that's what happens is the as the water boils it expands into steam and that expansive pressure causes either a piston to go up and down or in this case a turbine to spin now you want to recover that you could just vent the steam out but then you have to have a ready supply of clean fresh water in order to be able to make more steam or what you can do is you can put it through a condenser now the condenser it takes the steam and it cools it back down now remember we heat the steam up if we heat the water up it makes steam and it expands well if we cool the steam down it recondenses it comes back from expansion and it turns back into water and so what we can do is we can create a loop where we turn the water into steam and then we turn the steam back into water and we cycle it and that's what a condenser is and so the whole point of the condenser here let's look at it is we would take the steam in from in this case the turbine and then it goes through this cool this coolant loop will operate through a radiator that will cool down the steam and cause it to come out here as water and we can send it back into our boiler now this is a problem because for a number of reasons let's go ahead and we'll take a couple of these condensers so we have three condensers all right and then what we're going to do is we're going to take some temperature probes all right and this is probably what a lot of people are experiencing for problems here so here are temperature probes and we'll put one right next to the uh, furnace here all right so we have one right next to the furnace and we have one on each of our three condensers so i can imagine this is a big problem for a lot of people why they're having issues all right so all i'm going to do here is we have exhaust out we have air in so i'm just going to put a couple um elbows on here and this first one i'm just going to put a couple cat uh catalytic converters on here so that we don't have to deal with the smoke so we'll just put one two three of those uh, we're going to grab an air filter. It doesn't have to be an air filter, but this makes it easy for you to see that that is, in fact, clean air coming in. We'll grab an exhaust tip. This will just tell you that's exhaust. All right. And we'll grab a simple toggle button. And here's our toggle button. We'll grab a battery. All right. We don't need it for most things, but we will need it later. So here's a little battery. We'll just stick that on there. All right. Uh, we shouldn't have anything but this toggle for electricity. Bingo. All right. And then from this toggle, we're going to go here to the ignition. All right, so from there, if we look on the side here, we have a diesel in. So I'm just going to grab a big tank of diesel. So we'll go ahead and we'll put this tank on the side there. If we look, it spawns with diesel. So we have diesel, we have air, we have exhaust, we have a source of ignition. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so we're going to just light this furnace and let it go wild. And this is what I, what I think a lot of people are doing is they're just letting their furnace get up to as high a temperature as humanly possible and what it's doing is it's heating up the room so if we look at the furnace here the furnace temperature is up over 150 right now and it's climbing 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 you'll notice we're also steadily burning diesel fuel we are essentially any heat we do not need comes from fuel we are burning that we didn't need to burn so if our temperature is super high and we don't need it that high we're also burning a lot of diesel so if we can throttle our air intake what we can do is we can reduce our temperature and we can burn less diesel but also we don't waste as much heat into the room and so this is a concern we're up to 303 degrees now 
let's go ahead and we'll look at all of our temperature gauges here. So if we look at our first one, we're at 107 degrees. All right, so that would boil water just sitting there in a pot. If we put a pot behind the furnace, it would boil water sitting on the ground. Now, the problem is this. We're trying to use the condenser to cool down the steam. If this furnace is blazing hot and it's heating up the room and it heats up this condenser, notice the temperature of the condenser. It's going up, 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 up. If we look at it, the probe right here is at 111 degrees. We as a human being could not stand this close. Now, so if we look at our probe here, we're at 113 degrees at this condenser. We're at 115 degrees. Anything over 100 degrees is going to cause water to boil and create steam. The whole point of the condenser, again, is to cool the steam to turn it back into water. So if our temperature is over 100, we're defeating the purpose of this. We're wasting so much energy trying to cool down this room that we just wasted a ton of energy to heat up. All right, so that's at 113. Let's walk over to this one, 91. Let's walk to this one, 72. So if you run your furnace super, super, super hot, like we're doing right now, we just have it running at maximum temperature, you'll see how far away we need to put our condenser just to be able to take the steam and cool it back down and condense it into water. That is a lot of waste. Let's look at our uh, fuel numbers here. As you can see, look at the diesel fuel. It's just streaming down. That is a lot of diesel we are burning and we're wasting it. We do not need the temperature to be up to uh, at uh, 356 degrees right now. IRL, we'd not be able to stand this close. As you can see, the probe right here was reading 116. We'd have to be standing way over here. And so let's go ahead and first we'll put in a temperature control system for this furnace because that's going to come into play later. And I bet this is some of the struggle a lot of people are having is they can't get their steam systems to work uh, they're saying, oh, this, I'm randomly losing power. You're not really randomly losing power. What's happening is once the condenser gets over 100 degrees, you no longer can condense the steam back into water. And then what happens is your boiler cannot get enough water to continue to make steam. The steam output starts to go down, and you start to have less steam to make power. So let's go ahead and we'll delete all this out. So as you can see, these little temperature probes will show us what the temperature is going to be at around our system. So what we're going to do here is we're going to add something pretty, pretty simple. I'm going to try to keep this basic for Stormworks Basics. We're going to raise that air filter up too. And I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to take a valve. I'm just going to take this on-off valve. Now, we could, we could PID control this. We could make it really elegant. We could keep it perfect where it is. Or we could do this, and it's super simple, and that's what we're going to do. So the next thing we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab a microtrol. I just have one I call blank. And I'm going to click on it. This is going to be my furnace control unit. All right. And so we're going to go ahead and we'll just widen it out. And the first node I want in is my toggle button. So whatever you're going to turn this on. You want to use a panel? Great. Uh, we're just going to use a toggle button to turn this on. All right. Next thing. This is going to go out. It's going to be an on-off output. And this is going to go to our air valve. Bingo. Next thing we need to come in here is we want to do a number input. This is going to be our furnace Temp. And that should be all we need. All right, so let's go ahead in there and we'll work on this logic here. So we have furnace temp, we have air valve, we have the toggle. All right, so we need to set some numbers here. So first thing we do is we do a less than. And we're going to plug in the furnace temp. So if the furnace temp is less than, then we're going to set a number. So I use a property number. I'll show you why in a second. So this is going to be max furnace temp. All right, so this is the maximum temperature we want our furnace to go to. Now, I'm going to go 120. 120 will give us steam. This will be slow to heat up. It will take it a little bit of time. Uh, if you go any less than 120, if tested 115, you really you don't get hot enough to make steam. You only hit 100. This will be too slow for a lot of people. I'll also show you later how we can amend this so that when we're starting up our furnace, we, the temperature of the furnace will come up hotter and then once we get making steam, it will actually reduce the temperature to maintain. It's easy to maintain the temperature. It takes a lot of energy to get something up to temp, but it takes a little bit of energy to keep it at temperature. So if the furnace temperature is less than 120 degrees, we can change this as necessary. And so we're going to go ahead and grab it. And, and the toggle button is on. So the toggle button is going to be us saying, hey, I want my steam system turned on. So we have toggle button, and the furnace temp is, is less than our max set, which is 120. And then that's going to go to the air valve. 
All right, so this is a, a, an actual throttle system. What a throttle does in real life is it reduces how much air can get in to control combustion, right? You can only uh, burn so much fuel with air for the air-fuel mixture. And so one way to restrict the burn is by reducing the air, and that's what we're going to do here. So the toggle button is going to now go to the toggle. The toggle button is going to stay connected to ignition. We're going to take this air valve. That's going to go to the valve. And then we're going to take this temperature, and we're going to plug it in to the temperature of the furnace. All right. Uh, we have a new electrical node here, which is the valve. So I'm going to plug that in, and we'll spawn it. If we look at my settings here, as you can see, no infant electric, no fuel. All the damages, player damage included, are on. Engine overheating is on. All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to press the toggle button to start the system. Now you'll notice it's going to come up to temp. Before it was at uh, about over 350 degrees. Now, as you notice, it's staying at 120. Now, this is not a super elegant system. A, a better system would be a PID-controlled variable valve. But we're not going to get that complicated. This is all you need. As you notice, it opens the valves, close the valve, opens, close, open, close, open, close. And what that allows us to do is maintain our temperature. As you can see, we're staying within one degree of our set temperature. So we don't need something super elegant. We don't need a PID. If we want it, we could have it. We don't need it. But, um, you know, this system works perfectly fine. Also, look at our diesel level. Before, as you notice, we are consistently and constantly streaming down diesel. We were burning a lot of fuel. We were wasting it. We were wasting fuel putting heat into the room. We don't need to waste all that fuel. As you notice, our diesel level is going down much slower. Every time we get a big uh, puff of air, we burn some diesel. Puff of air, diesel. When the valve is closed, no diesel is being burned because it doesn't have any oxidizer. And so this will also save us a lot of fuel and make our system much more efficient. All right, great. So let's move on from here. All right, so the next thing we want to do is, again, this is going to be a steam turbine system. So we're going to go up and we'll type in boiler and we'll grab a boiler. So we're going to look at the parts here. If we look here, we have coolant B and coolant A. If it says A, B, it does not matter uh, which is the in and the out. So if we look down here, we have coolant out, coolant in. So because this is coolant in and out, it has to be in and out. Here it says A and B, it does not matter. So next thing we'll do is we'll grab some pumps. All right, now let's look at these again. This is coolant in. So if it's coolant in, the pump needs to be pointed in. The ring shows the direction of the pump. This one is coolant out. The ring has to be pointed away from that. It has to be that way. All right, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to grab a steam boiler. All right, and we can orient this any way we want because it has that A, B on it. If it says in, out, it has to be in, out. If it says A, B, it can be either direction. So as you notice, we have coolant B, coolant A. This has steam out. This has water in. So if you wanted your steam on the other side, you could flip this around because it says the AB and not the in out. So let's go ahead. And as you notice, there's one level up. So we're going to go ahead. We'll just grab some elbows. We'll go up and we'll angle them like that. I'll go ahead and we'll grab the select tool. We'll cut the boiler and we'll attach it like so. All right. So what's going to happen here is the coolant is going to pass through from the boiler into our furnace. The furnace is hot, so that's going to take cold water. It's going to go in the furnace. It's going to heat it up. It's going to come back in the boiler. Now, because this water's hot, it's going to go heat up the boiler. It's going to heat up the water that's in the boiler, and it's going to make it turn into steam once it hits 100 degrees. All right, so now that that is connected here, we have steam out, and we have water in. Now, we're not going to put any water tanks in here. Let's go ahead and spawn this really quickly. You could if you wanted, if you want extra Water, you could do that. We don't need it. I'm not going to do it. So if we page up on our boiler, you notice our fluid volume is 175. So we're starting with 175 uh, liters, I would presume, of water in the boiler. We're going to recycle it with a condenser. So we don't need to put fresh water in from tanks. We're going to What we're going to do is as we make steam, it's going to recondense it, put it back in. Okay. So that's uh, we're all set there. We don't need to put water tanks if we don't want to, but certain conditions we may want to. All right, so we're going to be using a turbine for this um, example. So we're going to type in turbine, and here it is here. And so let's go ahead, and we'll start by looking at all the nodes. So we have a pass-through RPS. That allows us to stack these or use either side. So we have RPS here. That's our power output right there. That goes on either side. Then on this one side here, we have steam in, and we have steam out. So 
the way a turbine works is it has blades in there. The steam is going to come out of here. It's going to go in there. The steam wants to expand rapidly. As it expands rapidly, it's going to spin the blades kind of like a wind turbine. Then once the steam goes through the blades, it's going to come out here, and we want to condense it. All right, so we're going to go ahead, and we'll take our turbine, and we'll just drag it towards just uh, give us a little bit uh, tighter configuration here. So right here we have steam in. All right, so I'll actually shut off symmetry. Steam in, and here's steam out. So we can plug those right into one another. So let's go ahead and plug these in. So the steam is going to come out of the boiler, and it's going to go into the turbine, and then it needs to come out. What we're going to do is we're going to condense it. All right. And so what we're going to do here is we will grab a condenser, and we'll look at the parts. So remember, by, monitor, by modulating the temperature of the furnace, we can keep this condenser closer to the furnace. If we don't modulate the temperature of this furnace, this condenser is going to have to go far, far away because we're wasting heat. We're heating up the air, which is going to heat up the condenser. So let's look at all the nodes in here. Steam in. We have coolant A and B. And we have water out. So what we're doing is when you heat up the water, it expands into steam. And then when you cool it back down, it condenses into water. And so what we're going to do is put the steam in here. We're going to cycle some water through a radiator. And it's going to essentially do the opposite of what this cycle loop does. This cycle loop heats the water. This one cools the water. In this case, that cools the steam. And then it converts it back into water. Then the water comes out, and we plumb it right back in here. So we're going to go ahead and we'll line this up. So I'll just grab this. We'll cut that. And we'll move it so that it's about in line with that pipe there for the uh, steam out. All right, good. So we'll merge that up. We're going to go put an elbow on here. And we'll go in and we're just going to stick this up and over. You can put it however you want it orientation-wise. But I'm going to go up and over. All right, so we we'll go like this. We'll put a, an elbow on there like so. And we'll go ahead and we'll delete this one, and we'll connect it all up. So now the steam will pass from the boiler through the turbine, turning the blades, giving us power. It's then going to come up and out, and it's going to go into the condenser. Then it's going to come out of here as water, because we've cooled it down, which allows it to condense. And we're going to plumb the water right back into the boiler. This saves us from having to have huge tanks of water. All right. And so we're going to want to uh, use some pumps to get this... Uh, water cycling. So if we look at the nodes again, we have A and B, so it does not matter which direction our pumps go. So we can throw a pump on there here. It does not matter because it's A and B. It's not like this. In out, it's A, B. So that one will go in. The other one needs to go out. Perfect. So I'm just going to add a block here, and we'll add one more right there. And I'm just going to grab a radiator. All right, we'll grab a 3x3 three three radiator is fine. Uh, you can use whatever you like. 3x3 three three should be fine for our use case here. So that goes like that. The reason I put the blocks in there, it just makes it a little bit easier to attach the radiator. If you want, you can get rid of them after that. So what this is going to do is this is going to cycle water through here, and it's going to take the water, which will take the heat from the steam, and then it's going to go through the radiator, which will cool the water. Now the new cold water comes through, and it will cool the steam further. So this will cycle in a loop. And the whole reason I started with that whole temperature probe thing is, is that if this is too close, this will eventually get over 100 degrees, and we will no longer be able to condense our steam back into water, and then our boiler will run dry and we'll lose power because we are no longer able to make steam. All right, good. So that's set up. Now, what we're going to do for this test is we're going to go ahead and I'm just going to grab a generator. We need something that will cause load. Load is actual work that needs to be done by the system. And so by putting a generator directly on the RPS here, if we look, we have an RPS node right there on top. As you can see, RPS right there. Uh, this is going to create electricity. And so this could be a propeller. This could be a wheel. This could be train wheels. Whatever work you want to do, by putting this large generator, these require a lot of power to turn. And so we're going to plug that generator on as some sort of work to be done by our system. All right, so let's go ahead, and first thing we'll do here is we'll plumb up the electricity. So pretty simple. We're just going to do it ultra simple here. We have one small battery going to the toggle. We're going to plumb it into both of our cycle pumps for our heat cycle. We're going to then go through our radiator and our two cycle pumps for our condenser right into the generator. This will generate electricity, and it will recharge our battery. All right, so now let's go to the toggle button. And we're going to take the toggle button. As soon as we start this, I'm going to start up my two cycle pumps. I'm going to start up my two cooling pumps. I'm going to start up my radiator. 
that's going to be all we need to do. So let's go ahead and we're going to start this up. All right, press the toggle button. Now watch the diesel furnace heat up. As you can see, we set a temperature of 120. Remember, it's going to throttle the system by choking the air. You notice it goes 119, 120. That's that working. The fuel burn is lower. We're also not heating this room we're in. If we look at the steam boiler here, as you can see, the temperature is rising. Now, it's going to rise slow. Some people are going to be annoyed by this. They don't want to wait. That's fine. We will go into a system next to uh, speed this up for start only. So what it will do is we'll let the furnace come up to temperature faster, which will boil our water faster. But then once the water gets up to temperature, we will then reduce it back down to 120 because all we need to do is maintain the temperature. It's much easier to maintain that high temperature than it is to initially start it. All right, so we're coming up to temp. It's going to take us a little while. So it's going to come up here. It's going to cycle the now hot water through here. It's going to heat up the water in the boiler. It's going to come through here, turn our turbine. The steam is going to come out. It's going to go into the condenser, which is going to be cooled by our cooling fan. As you can see, our pumps are running. It's going to send water back out into the system. Uh, closing our loop so we should not need to ever add any water to this. All right, we're at 92 degrees. You notice it's slow. We're only 20 degrees above the temperature we need in order to boil. Now, the higher the temperature of our furnace, the faster this will create steam. What we're doing is we're trading efficiency for speed, and then we'll go into a system that will give us uh, a little bit faster speed. All right, two more degrees to go. And we only have one more degree to go here, and we'll get it. You notice we have good stable flow on our coolant A and B. No water is coming in because the condenser is not running, and no steam is coming out because we are not at 100 degrees yet. So here it comes 100 degrees. You'll notice our steam starts going up, and our fill volume will go down. It's going to convert that 175 liters of water into steam. And here we go. So we're at 100 degrees. Our steam is going up. Our fluid is going down. You notice our steam out is a negative number. It is leaving the boiler. That is going into the turbine. You notice our turbine is starting to spin. We're up to 2 RPS. Steam ends at uh, 3.8 liters per second. This is going to continue to climb as we build more steam. You notice how we're barely over 100 degrees. We do not really need to get this super duper hot to make steam. We just need to get it up over 100 degrees to make the steam. All right, as you can see here, the steam is coming in. It's spinning the turbine. We're now at 8 RPS. If we look at our generator, you'll notice that it is outputting 89 and climbing S watts. This will go up to uh, about 400 something for this setup. Our condenser here, as you can see, it is um, we have a fluid volume. The temperature is at 54 degrees. Now, you'll run into problems again, like we showed in the beginning. If this furnace is too hot and this is too close, you will not be able to cool your, uh, your steam back down into water. So this is effectively sending water back to our system. As you notice there, we have water. It's negative 0.42 liters per second. So it's putting out 0.42 liters of water back into the system. So it's condensing that steam. All right, so it's been a little while here. Let's go ahead and look. We're up to 216 S watts. As you can see, we have steam in and steam out. Uh, with the new limitations that the devs have put on with pressurization, we can go up to a maximum of 60 atmospheres. That's our new maximum limitation. So we're at about a third of our maximum. If you notice, our RPS is still slowly going up. Because our furnace is running at such a low temperature, it is going to take time for this system to get up to uh, maximum speed. And that is all based on how much steam volume we're making. And so that's going to take us more time. Now, what we'll do here is we'll put on a keypad, and we'll actually play with that number. So let's go ahead, and we'll bring this back to work. All right, so what we'll do here is we're going to go ahead, and we're going to put a keypad. We're going to play with this number. All right, we'll make it really easy here. So we're going to go ahead, and we'll just make it one wider. We'll add a node. This node here is going to be a number input, desired temp. What we're going to do now is we're going to put a keypad on there. All right, here's our keypad. And we're going to use this keypad to change our temperature, and we'll see what it does to the furnace and our whole system here. So we'll go back in here. The keypad is plugged in with its number. It goes in there. We want to make sure we plug it into electricity. And let's go ahead, and we'll go back in the microcontroller. All right, now that we're in the microcontroller, let's we have desired temp. Now what we'll do, instead of using this property number, let's hook in this keypad. And so you may want to have the temperature set all the time to one number. You may want to have it at a higher temperature for startup for a faster start. You may want maximum 
power right away. So you increase your temperature. So for example, you could put a button that says, uh, you know, startup slash max temp, and that will give you a higher temperature to get your furnace started. It might go to a lower temperature later. So let's go ahead. We have desired temp here. That's going to go from our keypad. All right, we'll go ahead, we'll spawn it, and we'll go jump in here. So remember, it was 120 last time. All right, now our furnace took a little while to start up. So let's change that number from 120 to 200. All right, let's actually do one more thing, too. I want to do this as well. So let's grab some temperature probes, and we're going to put them in each, um, uh, a few intervals here for each part of our system. So we'll put one there, we'll put one there, we'll put one there. All right, so this is going to show us the temperature around. We'll actually put one right at our condenser. Our condenser is one of our most critical areas for knowing our temperature, our ambient temperature inside the room, because if it gets over 100 degrees, our condenser, we can no longer uh, condense the steam back into water, and we our system will shut down. All right, so let's go ahead and we'll spot it now. So we're going to go ahead and we'll change this keypad to 200 degrees, so another 80 degrees. And what you should notice is this furnace will start up faster than it did last time because we're allowing the temperature of the furnace to go up higher, which is going to allow the boiler to heat that water quicker. As you notice, we're already up uh, 150, and there's 200. And you notice it holds it within one degree, that simple valve system. Notice, we're already up to 80 degrees. This took a lot longer last time, but because the furnace is hotter, that is up to 60 degrees. That is up to 60 degrees. Let's check this one. 52, 43. So as you notice, we're starting to drop off here. Now, you got to think of this in real life. This is like, you could not stand here at this temperature. All right, notice the boiler is already up and running much faster now. Notice our steam. Our steam is up to 140. Notice that we're already up at 19 RPS. Let's look at our generator. Our generator is outputting 445 S watts. So this system is much better at 200. Uh, 120 was too low. So let's see if we can find a number that is going to still give us our maximum rotation and our maximum atmosphere. So right there we have a 19.78. All right, so we can go up to a maximum of 60 atmospheres. So let's test if increasing the temperature will give us more power. So we're at 445. So let's go up a simple five degrees. So we're going to go up 205 degrees. So we're letting that heat up. If you notice, our temperature is slowly rising there. And we'll give it a couple seconds here to get up there. So you notice temp is going up. We're up to 170 in the boiler itself. All right, notice our steam volume is really not going up. And notice our steam pressure is not going up. We're still at 445. Let's do uh, let's do an extreme example. Let's go up to we'll go up uh, to 250. Let's give this a second. So little tests like this will show you: Are you actually wasting fuel? Are you wasting your time doing this stuff? Um, and so, you know, this very well could waste a bunch of diesel fuel. The higher our temperature, the more fuel we're going to be burning. If you notice, we open, 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 close like that. This is going to burn more fuel to keep that temperature higher. We, the, the heat has to come from somewhere. It comes from burning fuel. We're still at 19.78. Guess what? This caps out at 19.78. We're not going any faster by going hotter. We'll go up to 300 degrees. By making this furnace super duper hot, you're not really getting any benefit out of it. But you're getting a lot of drawbacks. Let's look at the room again. That was at 60 before. We're now at 100 degrees. 100 degrees is 200, 100 degrees Celsius is like 200 something degrees Fahrenheit. You would literally cook if you were standing here. Now, when the when the uh, new update came out, people did not like that you would get burned by standing by your furnace. Uh, they thought that was a mistake or whatever. I, I don't think it was a mistake. I think, of course, in real life, you'd not be able to stand here. So they made it so you get injured if you stood too close to your furnace. And so what you really need to do is what, what I'm talking about here is regulate the temperature of your furnace. You don't need super hot temps. Right there, 102. Still, I, there's no way in, in the real world I could stand here. Let's look at that. That, no way I could still stand there. 76, I could, pro I could survive, but it would not be great. If we look over here, we're at 90 degrees. Let's look at this. We're, we're getting dangerously high to the point where if we let this over temp, we're no longer going to be able to, to condense, and I'll show you what happens. So let's look at our generator, right? We're, we're burning a lot of extra diesel. Are we actually getting more power? Nope. 
Why? The turbine is capped out at 19.789198. It's not going any faster. We're putting all the steam in and out of there. It's not giving us any more work. All we're doing is wasting fuel. We're putting a ton of heat into our, into our room here that would literally kill us and cook us. And eventually what's going to happen is we're going to get so hot on this condenser. What you'll notice is if we look at our boiler now, we're taking in uh, 0.88 liters per second of water. Watch what happens when this condenser goes over 100 degrees. It's getting close. So let's go and we'll actually, uh, we'll increase this temp. So let's go to 300, uh, let's put in 400 degrees because this, uh, this will end up getting up to about 360 degrees, I think. Watch this condenser. Condenser is up to 98.7, right? Once it hits 100, that steam is no longer going to be able to condense. If you remember before, the water coming out was 0.88. We're now at 0.44. So we're losing the amount of water we're making. And you'll notice pretty soon here, once we hit 100, we're not going to make any more water. The condenser cannot work above 100 degrees. And if we look there, look at our fluid volume. It went to zero. Look at our steam. Watch our steam go down. If we don't have water, we cannot make steam. And so we're going to lose our steam. If we lose our steam, there goes our power. So I think this is a lot of the problem people are having. All right. So now let's go ahead and cool our system back down. So we know that 180 was too, was, let's go back to 180. 180 worked fine. So we'll start at 180 and we'll see what it looks like. So we're gonna let our furnace cool down. Look at our fluid volume. Our fluid volume is starting to go back up. Look at our steam climbing again. All right, so I think a lot of people were just trying to run this super, super, super hot, and it's it's not counterintuitive. A lot of people thought this was counterintuitive. It isn't. What you're doing is you're making it so your condenser can no longer condense. You no longer have water. You no longer have steam. And bingo, we're back up to 445. So there's a lot of benefits in controlling your steam system. It is going to make you burn less diesel fuel or coal or use electricity if you use an electric furnace. It's going to make you so that each of those things you're using less energy to use it that's waste you're just wasting it you notice the temperature inside of your vehicle is much more reasonable now now this is why i think the devs put in this system before where it would burn your character to death if you were standing right in front of your furnace because you can't survive a temperature of uh of 100 degrees celsius but you can survive a temperature of 50 degrees celsius so in real life we could stand here it would be damn hot but we could stand here we could stand here. This is at 51. This here is at 44. That's at 37. We could literally live in this room and survive. If you do not control your temperature of your furnace, you should die. And so they took that out because people were complaining, but I think it was fine. I think what they should have done is explain why they did it. We're doing 445, right? Let's see what temperature, what is the lowest temperature we can go to and still produce 445. So we'll go in increments of 10 and then we'll step back up if we need to. So we'll go 170 degrees. Uh, this is still there. So we have not lost any power going down to 170. Let's go down to 160. All right, so as you notice, we're currently at um, 160 and we're running fine. We're still at 19789, which would give us 445. So let's go ahead, we'll click down to 150. Remember, 120 is where we started. So let's see when we get that drop off. All right. If you look at the RPS, it has not changed. We have uh, six decimal places. It has not changed within six decimal places. All right, so we're 106. Let's go down to, uh, we'll do 115 on this. And let's watch this. Once that temperature goes below 100 degrees, we're no longer making steam. So if we look, still doing 445. Still at 19 point many decimal places, six decimal places. At 115 here, we're probably going to, we could dip below 100 degrees, and then we're going to start to lose our power because we're not going to be making steam anymore. Here we go. We're within one degree of it. You notice our pressure is still the same. Our steam is still the same as we get under that 100 degrees. Up oh, there it goes. That's for the first time we've dipped under two. We're coming up on 100 degrees here pretty soon. We're going to start to lose our steam. We're under 100 here. So it's still getting rid of the steam. Look at our steam up top. Notice the number for the first time is starting to go down. So we're lo it was at 140. It was solid at 140 for a while there. Now notice it going down. So you notice we're still producing the same amount, but watch what happens when we run out of steam. Once our steam volume goes down low enough, this turbine's going to slow down. We're going to produce 
uh, less electricity that's going down. So let's go back up to 120. All right, so that is starting to heat our furnace back up. You notice the temperature is climbing and waiting for it to get slowly over 100. And there's 100 degrees. Now notice our steam will, st will soon start to climb up. All right, so what we're going to do now is by now actually understanding how the numbers are working, we understand that 120 sustains temperature. But 120 is not really all that fast to get it up. If you notice, our temperature is rising. We will eventually make more steam. But eventually here, as you notice, we're down to seven uh, steam. Watch what happens here. Up oh, there goes our power because our steam value is going down. All right. So what we're going to do here is let's kick this heat up even more. So let's go 150. Let's actually go right to 200. 200. So now we're going to test a start. So we go to 200. Look at that steam start to scream up. As the steam goes up, watch us quickly go back up to 445. And that's rising, all right? So what we're going to do now is we're going to add a little condition. So in order to help us to start more quickly, we're going to put in a condition here. So we know that 120 is fine to sustain. There's going to be furnace maintain temp. All right, so that's going to be at 120. All right, so what we'll do is we'll grab another property number here, control CV, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to do furnace start temp. All right, and this one we did, uh, we did 200. Let's do 200 again. That will, that will just be a little bit quicker. All right, uh, we don't need desired temp anymore. Desired temp was for a keypad. If you want a keypad control, you can. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to do it this way. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put a numerical switch box in here. All right, so we're going to do furnace. This is going to be the maintenance temperature. So the maintenance temperature is going to be our off value. Okay, and then this is the furnace start temperature. So we're going to start our furnace at a hotter temperature so that things get going more quickly. So you don't have to wait as long in order to get your furnace up to temp. That's going to then go in here. All right. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take an outside number. So we'll actually put that back in. And we're going to add a node. And this is going to be number input boiler temp. All right. So there is our boiler temperature. All right. So we're going to take the boiler temperature. And when the boiler temperature is below a certain number, we're going to use this hotter temperature on our furnace. When the boiler temperature reaches the desired temperature, it's going to go ahead and it's going to go back to our maintenance temperature. So let's go ahead and we're going to go a little bit over 100 degrees. We're going to go to 110. So let's try that. So if the boiler temperature is less than, right? And this is going to be right like that. And then we'll go ahead and we'll grab another property text. We'll just grab a fresh one here, property text. So if the boiler temperature, and in this case, we're going to set what temperature the boiler is, to, is so cold we want it to run here. So if the boiler temperature is this, this is going to be minimum boiler temp. All right. And we're going to set this. I'm just going to go 110 degrees. That's good temperature. It's 10 degrees above what we need. So if the boiler is colder than 110 degrees, it's going to make the furnace run hotter. As soon as the furnace gets up to 110 degrees, it's going to tell the furnace, hey, you only need 120. That will maintain that temperature. All right. So this is just automating this a little bit more. So this will let us start the furnace faster. It won't take as take us as long to get going. And then once we're going, we can go to the lower temperature, which will save us fuel, make sure that we're not cooking ourselves inside of our ship or wherever else we are. And uh, it will run us more efficiently, saving us a bunch of fuel and making sure that our condenser does not overheat. So let's go ahead and we will plug in this node here, which is going to be, we'll get rid of that keypad. This is now boiler temp. So we're going to go to our temperature of a boiler. We can get rid of the keypad now. And let's go ahead and start up a system and watch it from start to finish here. So we're going to go ahead and toggle that on. You'll notice the furnace is going to go up to 200 degrees now. This is going to put more heat in the room. Again, this would make it so that it, right now this is a really hot summer day. All right, this is a super hot summer day. And this is a, oh, my God, you shouldn't be outside kind of day right here. All right, you'll notice our boiler is coming up to temperature much faster because we're letting it heat up much quicker because our furnace is hotter. If we look at this temperature probe, yep, we would not want to be standing here in real life. All right, bingo. Once we hit 110, watch what happens here. Our furnace starts to automatically start to cool down because we don't need that much heat. We're just trying to get that water boiled faster. You notice our set temperature there on our boiler is 114. It's starting to come down. It's going to hang around 110. There we go, 120. 
And there's 110. All right, it's heating us back up because it went below 110. And so this is going to automatically modulate the furnace. The furnace is going to go up and down in order to maintain the temperature of our boiler at 110 degrees. So this will let us start faster. This will keep our temperature really close to 110 degrees. And if we look over here, we can see our generator is consistently producing the same amount of power. If we look at our temperature probe in the ground, 30 degrees is a hot summer day. Hot summer day. And because it's only a hot summer day, if we look at our condenser, our condenser is able to cool the steam back into water. If we let our condenser get too hot, it is going to not stop making water. If we look at the temperature of our radiator, watch it. It goes up and it comes back down. That means that our room is cold enough that we will always be able to condense. And we could, theoretically, if our fuel tank was big enough, we could run like this indefinitely. I hope you guys found that helpful. Uh, in the next videos, it'll be really, really simple. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take off the diesel furnace, we'll put on an electric furnace, and we'll run it with the same system. This system here was setting up the basics so that we can have a system that will run properly. So pressurization, there were certain things that may not work correctly with, with this, but the date today is November 24th, 2023 for me, and this is working great. Uh, this series is going to be all about steam. Uh, next, uh, like I said, we're going to be putting on electric. We'll put on a coal. We'll test that out with this system. It should work fine. And then we'll move into steam pistons. So I hope you guys found this video helpful, and I'll see you in the next one.